the fluid dynamics is so effed up, it's, I couldn't even imagine how bad that actually is. I'm Gail Banks, and I'm here to tell you what aftermarket diff cover guys don't tell you. Here we have three differential covers for the Ford Sterling Axle. Here's your stock one, here's the new Banks Ram Air, and here's a representative of all the flat back covers you've seen on the road for the last 20 years. Are they the same? Not even close. Let me show you. Notice the stock one is curved. Why? Well, axle manufacturers want the gear loop to travel up and over the ring gear without disruption. That's why the Banks Ram Air cover honors the stock shape. Ever aim a fire hose at a brick wall? That's what's happening inside these flat back covers, and it's all bad. Does anything get to the ring and pinion interface? Does anything get to that front pinion bearing at all? Well, I'm not Superman. I can't see through these things. What I did was I got Mike in the machine shop, who normally builds engines, to go put the mag high tech on the bridge port and just mill off that flat back right down to where the radius in the casting begins. It duplicates exactly the insides of the mag high tech. The mag high tech's on the truck. Let's see what's going on inside the cover. All right, Curtis, go ahead and idle it. I can already see aeration forming in here, and we're just at idle. The thing you don't want to do is unnecessary work to the fluid. It aerates it, and it heats it. So here we are at five miles an hour. We're already pushing the lube up, and it's falling off to, to the sides. Nothing's been being taken to the pinion area. Let's go to 10. All right, 10 miles an hour. We're getting some weird action here. Look at this. Same over here. It's just water falling off. But what's going on here dynamically? OK, let's take it to 15. All right, now we're driving it. Very little is going with the ring gear. We're at 15 miles an hour. And very little is going with the ring gear. We've just got this kind of waterfall action off to the left-hand side. Look at that. Even the dipstick is screwing up the flow. Let's go to 20. Look at this. It's driving the lube right into the flat surface. Oh, man. I can see in there, we still don't have any lube going over with the ring gear, and we're at 20 miles an hour. So you can see down in the bottom here, it's driving the fluid right into the surface, and then it's going up, up to the top where it hits and water falls off. Let's go to 30. 30. This ain't good. Oh, it sounds like we shifted gears, huh? Just more intense, same problem. It's really starting to put a lot of air in the loop. See how it's getting wider? The aeration is taking place on that impact and this impact at the top. Let's go to 60. 60. Yeah. Man, that's intense. That is really intense. I don't know if any of it is going over the ring gear to lube the front pinion bearings and the pinion to ring gear interface, that frictional surface. Very high load there. When you get air in the oil like this, the film strength of the lube does this, which means you're wearing out any rubbing surface, especially like the ring and pinion interface. Doesn't just touch. There's motion, there's relative motion. Just for the hell of it, 70. 70. Oh, 
baby. I don't know, man. I think we're just making cake batter right now, or maybe maybe we're gonna do some waffles or something. Man, that is pathetic. Houston, we have a problem. The moral of the story is these flatbacks heat the lube, aerate the lube, destroy the lube. Imagine what would happen if we put two more quarts in here like they recommend. All that stuff would be amplified. In fact, maybe we ought to put two more quarts in to just to see what happens. What's the benefit of more fluid? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, there is none. You have more fluid and it'll take a little longer to warm up, but the warm up goes beyond what you'd have with nominally four quarts. This is six and a half to seven quarts to that mark. I fear what we're going to see as we go up in speed, but let's take it to 15. 15. So we're going from five miles an hour to 15. I can see it water falling off the inside of this surface. Very little is going ar around with the ring gear as the thing was designed to do. Let's go to 30. 30. Oh, man. Let's go to 60. 60. How about that? The fluid dynamics is so effed up, it's, I couldn't even imagine how bad that actually is. Unreal. Can you hear that blasting the cover? Because I sure can. 70? 70. Oh, baby. <laughs> My only comment here is, this is dead wrong. There's this old wives' tale that overfilling above the stock fluid level is the thing to do. I'm calling bullshit on that. Even in the Jeep manual, they address it. Caution, overfilling the differential can result in lubricant foaming and overheating. For efficiency, the gears and bearings would prefer the lube to be right around 200 degrees. Anything more than 200, and you're taxing the base oil. The reality is, many diffs can run far hotter than 200 degrees. In many situations, like towing up a grade, the lube temp will rise above 250. When you approach 350, the oil oxidizes and turns to sludge. In our one-hour dyno endurance test, we found it surprisingly easy to reach a sustained temp of well over 300 degrees. So how do you cool the lube? Airflow. You need high velocity, cool air over the cover. That's how. The first thing we did was to instrument the truck with several anemometers to measure the airflow under the belly and behind the differential. When we were out on the highway, we recorded temps and air velocity. We noticed there was a dead zone right behind the face of the diff cover. What we found was a large low pressure zone directly behind the diff cover. The differential housing splits the air like a wedge. This low velocity dead zone extends as far out as 36 inches from the back face of the cover. This discovery resulted in our patented ram air design. As the truck moves through the air, cool ram air is forced into the scoops and directed 90 degrees up and through the long, thin heat radiation fins. As a result, the bank's ram air diff cover rejects heat five times better and does so with less lubricant than the flatbacks. So how do we test it? We performed a series of hill climb tests on a stretch of Interstate 5, California's infamous grapevine. The tests were run using the same truck with the same driver 
and the same load at the same time of day and at the same temperature. Starting with a nominal 78 degree ambient temperature, the driver pulled an 11,650 pound trailer with our 19 Ford F-250. Gross combined weight was 19,750 pounds. Starting at the same temperature, the rear differential was warmed by maintaining a constant speed of 55 miles an hour up a 6% grade for five miles ascending over 1,600 feet in altitude. At the top of the hill climb, running the stock diff cover, the lubricant temp was 205 degrees. Filled with seven and a half quarts, the mag high tech recorded 199 degrees. While the banks, filled with 3.6 quarts, recorded 192 and a half degrees. Even with less lubricant, the ram air cover reduced heat two times better than the flatback during the high horsepower uphill climb. But here's the money shot. From the crest to the end of the test, running 55 miles an hour for 700 seconds at relatively constant elevation, the stock cover cooled from 205 to 195. The mag high tech cooled to 192 and a half, while the bank's cover cooled to 178 and a half. And our final temp reduction compared to stock at the end of the test was five times better than Mag High Tech, and by extension, all the other flat back diff cover copies. Here's how the Ram Air cover wins over all other covers. It starts with the Ram Air cooling system. The cover mates perfectly with a differential housing for unobstructed lubricant flow. The Ring Gear Raceway controls lubricant flow to the pinion area, and the directional fluid guides send lubricant out to the axle bearings. It retains the factory spec fill level. It's got a dry mount, high pressure O-ring seal. No messy silicon or RTV here. It's got an easy access, 20 degree back angled fill port with a magnetic plug. The drain plug is also magnetic and it's located so you can get every last drop out of the diff. And not only does it have a sight glass, but the contrast screen allows you to see the level even at a distance. Longer lasting lube means increased gear life. Just one look and you can see which one is superior. The data doesn't lie, nor do your eyes. This thing kicks ass. For details and test data, head to bankspower.com slash diffcover. Children, do not try this at home. <laughs>